the 17th of October, 2021, will be a historical date for the church. Future generations will look back to October 17, 2021, as the start of the longest consultation that the Holy Father, successor of Peter, has called for the church. Starting October 17, 2021, until around October 2023, there will be consultations in dioceses in many different areas of the world in order to prepare for what is called Synod of 2023. A synod comes from two Greek words. A synod means same way, same road, same path. A synod is not an event that will happen in 2023. The synod is the church herself because the church is God's pilgrim people. So what do we mean when Pope Francis calls for a worldwide consultation? We return to the basics. Why do we consult? Because we want to listen. Why do we listen? Because listening is an act of love. So if the church is to be a church of love, the church has to be a church that listens. We cannot afford to be a church that is self-absorbed. A church that looks at itself only. A church that only is motivated by self-preservation. No. The church is for the life and the light of the world. The church is here for the salvation of the world. So, what is to be done? The church will be a listening church. Listen to the aches, listen to the pains, listen to the joys, listen to the difficulties of our people. We cannot avoid it. The Synod of 2023 is affected by the worldwide pandemic. There are a few things that we need to consider and listen to. Number one is the culture of death. It is not just the extrajudicial killings in the Philippines. It is also abortion in many different parts of the world. It is also the culture of war, the culture of terrorism, the culture of killing people in order for other people to live. That culture of death is all over the world. And to that culture of death, the church must stand up to listen and yet to proclaim the gospel of life. So there is the culture of death. The second D is the threat of disease. The threat of COVID-19. But not only COVID-19, there is also the threat of Ebola in Africa. There is also the threat of AIDS. There is also the threat of HIV. The threat of disease is upon us. And medicine becomes more and more expensive because medicine becomes more and more in demand. So to the culture of death, the church must listen. To the threat of disease, the church must have compassion. And then the next D is depression. It is discouragement. It is despair. Working from home is nice. But so many people are getting to be mentally imbalanced because of working from home. Staying secure from COVID-19 in isolation is good and healthy. But we were not meant to be in isolation forever. And if we continue to live in isolation too long, 
then there can be a mental breakdown, a psychological breakdown. Because no man is an island, no man stands alone. No man lives for himself because we were destined to live in community. The incidence of suicide, the incidence of people hurting themselves, the incidence of resorting to drugs, to alcohol, and to other addictions. These are signs of a world that is depressed, a world that is distressed, a world that is in despair, a world that is looking for meaning. To the culture of death, the church listens. To the threat of disease, the church is attentive. And to the situation of depression, the church is truly concerned. That is why we will have the Synod. The Synod will be a proof that the church is a listening church. The church is not here for itself. The church is here for the world. How? How shall we listen? We, how shall we look? And how shall we see the situation? We will look at it from three perspectives. The first perspective is the eyes of Christ. We will look at it from the eyes of Christ. But we will also look at it from the eyes of the apostles to whom Christ had entrusted his mission. But we will not only look at it from the eyes of Christ and the apostles, we will look at it from the point of view of the crowd, from the point of view of society. As we want to convert society for the Lord, society must also convert us to become more human, to become more compassionate, to become more merciful. Please remember those three characters, my dear brothers and sisters. Christ, the apostles, and the crowd. They must work together. You know why? Because if the apostles do not have Christ, then the apostles will only be a non-government organization. If the church does not have Christ, the church will only be a political ideology. So the apostles need Christ. But Christ needs the apostles because if Christ stayed alone without apostles, if, because if Christ stayed alone without the church, then Christ would just be one of those historical figures in history. But Christ is not just a historical figure. Christ is not just an ideology. Christ is a person. And the person of Christ is continued in the church. But when the Lord and the apostles are together, and if we are separated from the crowd, if we are separated from the society, is that good? No, it is not good. You know why? Because if the Lord and the apostles are together, separated from the crowd, separated from society, what will happen? The church will just be an elitist organization. It will just be an exclusive organization. But we are not that. The church exists for the world. That is it, my dear brothers and sisters. That is what the Pope wants to happen to the church. I tried my best to summarize for you because I know you will not read what the Pope has written. This is what he says. A synod is walking together on the same path, on the same road. Listening to the signs, to the groans, to the laughter, to the smiles of the people, to the culture of death, to the threat of disease, to the threat of depression and discouragement and despair, man search for meaning. The church is there, listening. But we will listen not as an NGO. We will listen with the eyes of the Lord, with the eyes of the apostles, with the eyes of the crowd. But keep in mind that the devil is also listening and the devil is threatening the church, the enemy. 
we must be vigilant as we listen because the noises are so many and if we are attuned to the Lord we will recognize that the Lord is not only in the church and in the scriptures the Lord is in one another let us listen to one another because true love listens.